I think we've all uh, seen, maybe in nieces, nephews, or grandchildren, uh, the attitude of uh, the two boys in our gospel today, where someone is asked to do something and you get the big pout and the big no. But they eventually think better of it and go do it. And then the one who says, oh, sure, 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 but gets absolutely lost then in the computer game, treehouse, whatever it is they're doing, and forgets to do what they were asked to do. Uh, each one of us has been given a responsibility by God. Each one of us has been entrusted with this gift of faith. And every gift is given to us to give to others. Every gift that is given to you is given to you to give to others. So the, the, we, we've meditated this before. If you have the gift of singing, that's not given to you so you have something to do in the shower. That is given to you so that other people can hear beautiful sounds. Uh, if you have the gift of organization, that while it's nice that you may have a perfectly organized bedroom in general, that gift will be also for the service of others, you know, not just you. Uh, if you have the gift of, of, of preaching, teaching, uh, healing, you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you're a, a gifted doctor or surgeon, that's not just for you, you know what I mean? Every time you get a pinprick, you know what to do. I mean, it's for serving others. All of your gifts are for others, for others. So this gift of faith is also, it's for us, yes, but it's also our responsibility to, to witness to that to others, to not to become merely followers of, of the Lord, but to be missionary disciples. Not just following him, but also discipling others in our turn. And, and this is something which I think traditionally in Ireland we probably delegated to priests and religious. Maybe at one stage there were so many of them uh, it was considered sufficient to meet the priests and religious. They'll do the religious education in the schools and, and all of that. And I think it may have been lost somewhere along the line that everyone is called to it. All the baptised. Priests, religious, laity, moms, dads, factory workers, plumbers, electricians, whatever you, seamstresses, Whatever you do, all of us are called to be witnesses to our faith. All of us are called to be missionary disciples. And that's such a, that's such, I mean, like, that's such a gift. It's such a privilege. It's such a, 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 an honor, such a treasure to be placed in our hands that we can witness to others. St. Francis de Sales says that you'll attract more bees with a drop of honey than with a jar of vinegar. A drop of honey rather than a jar of vinegar. So in our efforts to be missionary, missionary disciples, it's, it's our love that wins people, not just knowledge or uh, skilled rhetoric, but it's our love, it's our love. There's a lot of talk these days about the need for renewal in the church, and there are, and have been for 30 years, all sorts of different plans as to how this renewal could and should take place. And I was a child of the 90s where there were some amazing missionary, somewhat missionary efforts uh, where it was considered the future of the church for us all to have a good old fashioned, no, not good old fashioned, but to have a good old gospel choir. This was what we thought was the way forward, gospel choirs. Why? Because Sister Act had been quite a success uh, at the time, so we thought this is the way to go. If we all have a gospel choir and get Bridie, Biddy, and Betty down the back to sing all in this together, then the church, the church will be renewed. And um, of course, that that didn't that didn't work really. Then we thought, okay, right. What if we don't do gospel choir? What if we do rock mass? Okay. So then we tried that, and that was an epic failure. So. Uh, What's really important is that in all of these missionary efforts, we get back to basics, back to basics of what our faith is about. So for any renewal, for any revival, for any restoration of the church, it will come through our obedience to God. So listening to, to the Lord speaking in our hearts, the Lord's inspiration, not just like fad ideas, but what the Lord inspires. And that would be fruit of divine intimacy. So the way I remember that is ROI, Republic of Ireland, or renewal through obedience and intimacy, divine intimacy. ROI, renewal through obedience and intimacy. 
there'll be renewal in the church. How? It won't come through like fantastic, necessarily hugely expensive projects and plans. That's not how renewal is going to come. Renewal will come through the, the faith. The faith lived with authenticity. That's what makes Catholicism attractive. Not that we have big buildings or halls, whatever it may be. It's, it's hearts on love, in, in love, on fire with the Lord. And, and that will come from us being obedient to him. So if we ever put obedience to God to the side in order to favor the new fad, the new, the new thing that everyone apparently is doing, it won't work. It won't work. It won't bear fruit. It won't bear fruit. The renewal of the church will come through obedience to the Lord. It will come through divine intimacy. Another word for that maybe is faith. That is, our faith is renewed. It makes the, the, faith, the, the, the faith that we witness, that we, that we hold so dear, it makes it attractive. And so in this time of Advent, when there maybe is a, a greater openness to, to the Lord, there is a member, even traditionally, back in the day and around, around um, this time of the year, maybe next, from next week on, in all the primary schools, they'd have all had the, the Christmas plays with little young fellows running around with tea towels on their heads. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and it was like, so kind of parents were the kind of, once it or not, there they were, like sitting at, in, in, in a school somewhere, uh, looking at a representation of, of the birth of Jesus and the joy it brought to the angels and the joy it brought to the shepherds and the, 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 the mystery that, that was resolved when, when the three, three wise men arrive. So there's a certain openness to God. And maybe uh, this last year being rough as it was with COVID and that, maybe there is a greater openness to God. Maybe there's a greater hunger for what we have, a greater hunger for the faith. So Lord, let us be like maybe neither of these uh, sons in the gospel. Let us try not to be the fellow who says no, but eventually does it. Well, let us definitely not be the fellow who says he will do it and does nothing. Let's try to be the son, the daughter, that says yes and does it. Obedience, simple obedience to the Lord. Lord, may this be fruit of our divine intimacy with you, and may we see renewal and revival because of it. Amen.